What's going on? In this video, I will discuss the LC2i Active Lineout Converter. I will cover the reason why it might be necessary, go over its features, discuss how to configure it, and give you my thoughts on the final product. So this is what I have going on right now. I have this Rock 4 Fosgate amplifier right here, driving a 10-inch, 200-watt RMS sub. I have this inline amplifier from Alpine, driving the four door speakers. I still have the factory head unit and the factory head unit does not have preamp outputs. Most aftermarket stereos will have preamp outputs, but factory head units, most don't. And that, that'll be the RCA jacks right here. The cleanest signal that you can feed into an amplifier will be that preamp output because it's not already amplified by the internal amplifier of the, of the stereo. But unfortunately, like I said, factory stereos do not have preamp outputs. So you basically have two options. You can either get an amplifier which accepts high level, which is that already amplified uh, speaker level signal, and hook it up that way. Just basically use the built-in line-out converter inside the amplifier, which both of these happen to have, and that's how I have mine set up. Or you can get a line-out converter. And what a line-out converter will do, it converts that high level speaker input into low level RCA preamp outputs and then you can feed these low level preamp outputs into your amplifiers. Once you decide to do this, you have to figure out which, which one to get. So there's, there's basically two types. There's this type right here, which is an active line converter, and there's the cheap ones that you can get at Walmart and they're passive. In other words, they don't use any power. They just use the power from the high level input itself in order to do the processing into a low signal. This, on the other hand, you actually have to apply power to it. This will accept a much higher level of input than a passive can. So that's one benefit of using an active line converter, especially if you have a high powered system. Another benefit at this particular model is that it has the AccuBase system in it. And what happens is the stereo system in this car is crap and they know it so what the factory does, what the manufacturer does is it at attenuates the bass as you turn up the volume so that you don't blow your speakers. That's great. That's fine for the crappy factory speakers that they usually put in there. But when you upgrade your speakers, like I did, right? I have the kicker speakers in there. When you upgrade the speakers, that's not necessarily a great thing. And if you're taking that high level speaker attenuated signal that that factory head unit is providing, and you're feeding it to this amplifier, guess what? That attenuation goes with it. Your amplifier will amplify exactly what it's fed. So it's gonna be amplifying that attenuated signal. And basically as you turn up the volume, it, it will not compensate. It'll, it'll sound like crap. So that's where this comes in. This will actually take the signal where, you, where the factory rolls it off and you can actually set that on this and basically calibrate this so that you never feed your amplifier a rolled off signal. I actually think that the bass is getting attenuated quite a bit and you know as you turn it up it just doesn't sound right. It sounds like it's lacking a little bit, like it's not as punchy as, as it should be. And the reason why it's doing that is because your highs are turning up with the volume knob but the, the bass is not because this amplifier is not accounting for that roll off. This on the other hand will. Another thing this line converter does, it has two outputs, right, two preamplified amp outputs, a main output and it has a bass output. This main output is a full signal. So this is the output right here that I'm gonna feed into this Alpine uh, inline amplifier because this is driving my door speakers and I wanna feed a whole signal, a full signal to those door speakers. But it also has a base output down here and this is the, the output that I'm gonna to connect to this amplifier right here because this one, it already has a low pass filter built into it. So basically I'm only gonna be feeding this amplifier only the low levels that I want anyhow. So that should clean up the signal quite a bit too. This line-out converter even has a bass control plug right here, which you can get separately. I'm not gonna use it because this amplifier already has one that I'm using, so I don't need it. But for those of you who have an amplifier that doesn't have that, if you, if you get this, you'll have an option to plug that bass control on there right there and put the knob on your dash somewhere and be able to control the bass at will. So I'm about done with my installation here. I'm just buttoning things up and I wanna go over a few things. Here's the active line out converter right here. So for me, my particular installation, it was very, very easy to do all the connections that I needed because I could just tap into the existing amplifiers 
for example right here the speaker inputs are right here so all i did was just basically piggyback right off of the alpine that's already here and for all of the power requirements right here because it's an active one it requires 12 volts ground and remote i simply tapped into the existing amplifier right here so that also was easy so all i had to do after that was basically run rca cables right into my amplifier and i was done i was originally gonna use the active line converter to drive the alpine but uh, I realized shortly after I started that this only has two channels left and right and uh, this would uh, this is driving four speakers so I didn't want to use my fade functionality for my stereo so I just left the Alpine with a high input it's doing a great job like that anyhow so I wasn't worried about that the LC2i was worth it for my my particular setup because my rear speakers were heavily attenuated in this car the WRX the rear channel in the WRX is heavily attenuated and I wanted to clean that up and this active vinyl converter did that it cleaned it up but it's important to note that you have to just like any other amplifier you have to make sure that your gains are matched to, to your input and your outputs and the way you do that this it actually has a very handy maximized light right there and the way you you match it is you set your stereo to about 75 percent volume and then you turn up the gain on your bass on the channel that you're using so in this case in my case i was using the bass output so you turn up the gain on the bass until that light starts going off after that light comes on the signal is distorted so all you do is back it up until that light is no longer on so after you set up the gain for your output then you have to set up the accubase for your particular car so the way you do that is by turning the AccuBase threshold set screw on the side all the way to the left counterclockwise. So you can turn it all the way counterclockwise. Then you're going to make sure your AccuBase knob is in about the 12 o'clock position. Then you're going to put a high quality source with a lot of bass and you're going to put it on. And you're going to start turning up your volume in your head unit. And you're going to do that until you start hearing the bass dropping off. Uh, in other words, until you stop stop hearing the bass increasing from the, the channels that you're interested in. So if you got the, your front channels, um, you, you can fade it to the front and do it just with the front channels. Or you can fade it to the back, the rear, and do it just to, to, to the rear channels. So you're going to turn up your volume until the bass stops increasing, even though the volume is still going up. And that's the point where your bass is getting rolled off to the factory speakers. Once you get that point, you stop. And then you take the AccuBase threshold and you turn it clockwise until you start hearing the bass pop back in. Once that's done, then your AccuBase is set and you can just leave it, set it and forget it. So now you know that this is calibrated to your particular setup. And even if you go past that point where the base of your speakers is being attenuated, the active line converter is still going to send a good signal to your amplifier. And then you're going to have the proper bass being sent from the active line converter to your amplifier along with your, with your volume. One thing to mention is the AccuBase only comes out of the base output. Only comes out of this, this channel right here. It doesn't come out of the main output. The main output has a full range. Whatever you're feeding, this is what it's gonna come out of there. You know, pre-amplified of course, but it, it doesn't have any extra processing to the base. Uh, only the base output is gonna have that AccuBase compensation built into it. So make sure you keep that in mind. So for my particular setup, this actually worked wonders. Now, as a final little tip here, you gotta make sure that all of your gains are set right on all of the amplifiers that you have. And each will have its own way of setting the, the, the gain and matching it to, to your system. You have to do that, because if you don't do that, your system is just not gonna sound right, especially as you change music sources. Just the bass is just gonna be so inconsistent. So what you want is to set it for a, a proper source and then just use your remote for your amplifier to control the bass to your taste once the music is playing. Another thing to keep in mind is the uh, GTO setup right here, which enables the line out converter to turn on when, when it senses a, sig a speaker input signal that's turned on by default. So if you want to drive it via the accessory wire, you have to take that little dip switch on the side and turn it to bypass, which is what I did because I'm using the accessory cable to drive all three of them. But that's a choice that you, you'll have to make based on your own setup. The LC2i comes in modest packaging. It has a very stripped down owner's manual and a signed quality control card, which basically guarantees this particular converter was tested and works fine. If you want further installation instructions, they have a pretty good Q&A section on their website and how-to instructions. 
Of course, videos like this can also help if that's not enough. It doesn't have any of the installation cabling you will need, much like amplifiers, and it doesn't come with a remote level control. This is meant to provide the preamp input an amp will need so the installation is easy since you will usually use the same wires you used for your amp. If you've installed an amp using your factory stereo's underpowered speaker level signals and your bass is inconsistent and sounds distant and hollow when you turn up the volume, chances are your bass is getting rolled off and an active line converter like this one provides the solution. At the time of this video, this costs just over $60 new most places online and can be had even cheaper used. Once I installed this line out converter and adjusted the gains properly, my system became way more responsive to the bass frequencies and now has a more complete punch your bass response, so I'm pretty happy with the results. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks a lot for watching. If this was useful to you, support the channel by liking the video and subscribe to see my future content. Take care.